Welcome my friends, this is Maniacal Incorporated. On the last episode, we saw two High Kings die. Maul Toli passed away after a short illness following an assassination attempt, and Kiron was already ill when he became the High King. He was wounded and died from his wounds after 15 months. The High Kingship has now fallen to Ruokon II, a grandson of Ruokon I and a son of Urgus, a cousin of Blahamuk. So he is the third High King from the Ruokon branch of the family. But of course, you and I, dear viewer, we know that he is actually a son of Flan Sinna, a previous High King, from an affair that he had. So we've a, a couple of things to do. We've to, we've to get all his, um, his lifestyle perks and all that sorted out. We as might as well begin by taking a look at the character himself. So just like Flan Sinna, he has gained the trait Paranoid, he's Calm and Cynical. He has a lot of other uh, attributes, Aspiring Blade Master. He's finished off the Scholar lifestyle. Uh, he's a, a wise man, a Hunter, he's Athletic, he's Quick, uh, a Forder, and an Astute Intellectual, level 3, or a, a 3-star Intellectual. So he's actually doing a good job at the moment with the dev growth in, let's see if I can pick it up, uh, oh, I need to zoom in with the dev growth, here in Dublin, which he controls, so it's a, um, development growth is 93 out of 100, development is 7 out of 100, so, uh, possibly we're going to see it go up to level 8 shortly, and I think the other place he has is Oriel, so that's hopefully going to help us progress towards the feudal era, maybe, and then again, the only problem is he is uh, 48, I actually have him devoted to our cultural fascination and uh, what we're being ex exposed to is both onagers at the moment. So that'll be uh, done in nine years. So it's possible that'll be his great contribution to the kingdom is the, the development of uh, siege weaponry. I think the easiest place to start is here with the lifestyle focus. We're going to go for the scholarship focus. It'll give us learning plus three and development growth of plus 15. So that's doing a great job of countering the uh, the penalty that we get for being insular Christians. And for now, because he's already slightly advanced in, in age... He's not too bad, but uh, we've had a lot of High Kings die in their mid-50s. We're probably going to finish off the whole body tree. So next is Restraint, which isn't much good to us, even though possibly we might uh, we might have him become celibate for the, uh, for the piety bonus. Then we're into Know Thyself, so we'll get a warning a year before a natural death. These are the two that we're most interested in. Medium boost to health, and then uh, another boost to health from the, uh, the whole body tree. Uh, trait. So I think we'll we'll finish off this tree and then we'll maybe take a look about either the martial or diplomacy. And of course what's really helpful is this one. Learn on the job. 20% of counsellors primary skills will be added to your own. So he's already 37 learning from his, his uh, court archbishop and we have a lot of other positions to assign as well. So it'll be interesting to see what his stats look like after that. We as might as well get this job done next. God, we have so many positions to uh, to appoint. I think this should be easy enough if he's still there. He is up at the top, is Ernach. I think he's going into his... Uh, serving his third High King at the moment. He's a powerful vassal as well. That'll keep him happy. As for our steward... We have another powerful vassal who we were also appeasing under the previous regime. Uh, so... Uh, Duke Donal. So we will assign him. I think he was friends with Kiron. He still hates us, though. He still hates us quite a lot. It's predominantly the short reign. We're cruel or he's cruel? Ooh, he's a rival. He's a rival. We'll leave him there for a short while. Uh, it's entirely possible that we'll be removing him. And uh, let's see if we can figure out a better... Um, hmm... We have a bit of a drop-off then before the next person. We leave him there for a while. And for our Spy Master. I think we have a lot of choices for our Spy Master. 
We could either appoint the the previous wife of both Chiron and Moltoli or our cousin Orla who I think might also be our sister. Uh, we've given control to Adelaidis with the last while, so I think we're going to appoint uh, Orla this time around. I was actually thinking of marrying Adelaidis and turning her into basically a, a sovereignty figure. She would have been married to two previous high kings and, and now she'd be marrying a third high king. But uh, I think instead what we're going to do is we're going to try and get marriages that will bring us uh, alliances and bring us numbers to the table. So what I'm going to do this time round is appoint Orla. Now as you can see Orla doesn't like us too much so we will probably, probably need to start a scheme to sway her uh, and keep her on side. On second thoughts, for as fun as it would be to appoint Orla... Adelaidus already likes us. Uh, I think we will hire her. Because uh, we do need to keep our sway schemes for, for other people. So, yeah. Um, I'm already a bit suspicious about Orla as well. I can't really see who else could have been in a position to to get a box of poison gold to Moltoli. Two rulers back. So I think, yeah, we'll, we'll put... Uh, We'll put uh, Adelaidus in place instead. And because marriage opportunities aren't great, she has served as queen to two previous rulers, and like I said, she's now becoming somewhat of a, a sovereignty figure, something like Gormla. She was married to the, to the king of Dublin. And then when he died, she was... Uh, that was uh, Amleaf Caron or Amlib Coron, then she was married to uh, Molshocknail MacDonald, the High King of Ireland, and then when he was deposed, she was married to uh, Brian Baru, the new High King of Ireland. So something similar is happening here. We're going to marry this character, uh, send that proposal, and for the prestige, we will see if we can begin a scheme to romance her. We're both astute intellectuals, so I think it's only fitting uh, that the new High King would try and write a poem to her. Your sizable ears are the rock I cling to in stormy seas. I really want to have you close, that I may know the depths of your love. Stop resisting. You will be mine. Ooh. Yeah, it's not... It's not great. It needs it needs some work. The uh, it needs some work. She's not too happy with it either. Um, I am most grateful. So the scheme continues. And as for the succession, I have absolutely no idea what's going on at the moment. This is our first day on the job. We're new. Uh, for now, we're just going to support our brother. I think it's uh, Indirect. Uh, so he is apparently uh, leading. Not too sure. A couple of people are voting for Monya. He's a year older than our current ruler. Um, Flansina the second, who would become Flansina the third if he was elected. I don't know how the hell that that works out. A um, couple of people are. When I say a couple of people, one people are voting for him. And yeah, a lot of people want uh, Monya. So I think when when, Mon, when Monya inevitably dies. Um, it might, it might kind of throw up some, some new names and we'll see who's, who's being supported by the vassals, uh, later on. As you can see, our prestige is quite low, so we need to do some things to start getting that back up. We're gonna immediately hold a feast to celebrate the ascent to power of Ruokon. Um, so we'll lose some stress, I don't think we have any. And of course, it's also going to improve opinion with our vassals. Our vassals don't seem to like us too much at the moment. We will send out the invitations. And I've offered Connacht a, a vassalization. It is not inclined to accept it. It's a, it's a big negative at the moment. And apparently that's all coming from the difference in military strength. We have 4,000 troops uh, out of 6,000, as you can see up there in the corner. And they're pretty, pretty equal at full capacity. So they're not inclined to accept a uh, vassalization at the moment. 
I don't want to have to go to war with them. Because that's kind of a... I won't say it's a waste of time. I would rather vassalize them peacefully. What we're going to do over here is we are going to raise all of our troops. Uh, we're going to split out the mercenaries. And then we're going to send them south and start raiding, both for money and prestige, in the undefended areas in... Um, in northern England and probably western Western Francia and possibly even uh, into Welsh Meath. I have actually formed an alliance by marrying a zero-year-old child uh, within the family. So we will bring their substantial military forces into an alliance as well. Even if we don't actually get them to accept vassalization, we might leave them alone and just raid down these areas for a bit of money and a bit of prestige. So we've just gotten a pop-up that our last feast has came to an end. This, of course, is because uh, High King Kiron has died in the middle of it. So basically his body is, is pulled off the table and the, uh, the tables are reset for a brand new party with the passing of my kinsman. High King Kiron, his feast comes to an end. As the subdued guests leave, I pray that the Lord welcomes Kiron as warmly to heaven as he welcomed us to his halls. So everyone just leaves one hall and then travels to uh, to another one for our party. And it was, it was such a fun feast. Um, but um, yeah, that was a, that wasn't a great end. And there you go, there's our one. The guests are gathered in the great hall. Lords and ladies from, from Kiron's feast that was held next door. The mood is bright, really? Really, in the midst of a funeral? Okay. We've gone back again to a distant branch of the family. We keep going back to these guys for alliances and fair play to them. They keep giving us alliances. There's another 1,000 troops. And should we die right now, Monya, our... Oh god, I don't even know what he is. He's, he's technically a brother of ours, but he will succeed us. So we're all sitting at the big table and suddenly it cracks and breaks open. Everyone, all the distinguished guests are sent to uh, to sit with the, uh, the lower down, the lesser people. Chieftain Volvari is not happy. He's not happy. He's taken it as an insult to be sitting with the commoners. Um, but we've ended up sitting with our daughter, Flan. I don't know, I'm not going to say anything. Um, apparently, we um, we ended up talking all evening and agreed it should not be the last time we feasted and laughed in each other's company. Yeah, probably, yeah, we should probably talk to our daughter at some stage. So we had a great night and we're going to become friends with our daughter. Fantastic. I've split the armies, sent them off in two separate directions. Our mercenaries are going to stand on the border and just kind of watch. Just in case the English come up and try and uh, stop us from stealing all their money. And our brother is back as our primary heir. And um, it looks like the party is over. What a woman our daughter is. And we gain 150 prestige. And so our raiding armies have reached northern England and have began raiding down the places. I'm going to start with um, I'm going to start with the the kind of the undefended region. So I'm not going to go for the for the the castle fortifications. We're just going to go for the cities and the churches for now. Uh, am I right in saying Flancina has been taken prisoner? No, he hasn't. He was somebody was taken prisoner by him, and we've gotten ourselves a lifestyle perk. Not a lot that we can do here. We could go for Faithful, but uh, what we're going to do instead is uh, Restraint. It'll allow us to embrace Celibacy, and that is something that we might think about doing. Running into a small bit of problems here. Alliances are being formed and broken due to... I'm not, I'm not too sure why. The game is only recognizing three wives. And is then, if I try to form a fourth alliance, it's dumping out uh, one of the earlier ones that I'm betrothed to. So I think it's maybe a bit of a, a problem with the um, with the way characters are betrothed to each other. But um, 
our alliances are kind of hopping around all over the place at the moment. We've just lost the one to to Transgerenia. I'll see if I can if I can sort that out. We basically lost all the prestige that we made on um, having to to break a, a betrothal, so it hasn't it hasn't done much good for us. Um, here, hopefully, is a way that we can make some more back. We're attempting to romance our wife. God, she's demanding. Was it uh, Maltoli? She demanded that he stand outside her her bedroom door and defend her. And then he actually had to uh, to stop an intruder from killing her. Uh, she wants somebody to slay a a wolf. So we could either go and do that. It's a uh, sixty-two. Uh, success chance. We could try and just kill a mangy dog, a poor shaggy beast, in a kennel. 61% chance of success. Or we can spend 15 quid to bribe a hunter. And you know what? I think that's what we'll do. Because it's pretty much a guaranteed success for 15 quid. We have a bit of a problem now. Our mercenaries, of course, are about to run out. I don't think we'll be in a capacity to keep them on. Um... We accidentally marched back into our own territory and bought back some money. I actually forgot about that. So we have this region here. Now we said one of them in against a um, a church, and the other guys have gone in against a an actual town just to keep them occupied. But there's thirty quid in there, so that'd be awesome. And one of the first things that we'll do with all the money that the guys have brought back for us is we're going to call a hunt. And again, see if we can get more prestige. As we prepare to begin the hunt, actually right on the uh, the doorstep of where we are raiding down at the moment, this giant hulking figure emerges and shouts, Explain yourself! What are you doing in my marshland? So we could kill him. Um, get 29 dread. Uh, we can ask to talk it out. Big chance that we're going to fail. Your marshland, is it? Well, then show us around. Local guide will give us, I think, plus two prowess, and we get 500 stewardship lifestyle experience. I don't think that's enough to actually get a stewardship trait. Uh, it would be hilarious if it was. But uh, possibly stewardship is a, is a route that we might go down in future. Uh, now that we've already gotten some uh, some experience in it. Well, there you go. Wasn't the most exciting of hunts. We saw a crazy man covered in dirt and he showed us his marshland. And that's about it. And we get 150 prestige. God almighty, she's demanding. Now she wants us to starve ourselves. Uh, you should be able to sustain yourself on nothing but your love for me for many days. I We can either just refuse, point blank. Um... We can agree, and we will become slightly starved for two years, so we get a minor health penalty. Or not a crumb will pass my lips, but I won't shun a chunk or a piece, so basically uh, we're going to kind of lie to her. The chances of success in both of them are the same, chances of failure are the same. Here is worse though, succeed or, or fail, we're going to get slightly starved, so I think we'll actually go for this one. Uh, we're basically going to try, and again we're a bit paranoid, so... Uh, we're not the, the honest type figure that uh, Maul Tolly was. So not a crumb will pass my lips, but I won't shun a chunk. So we're going to try and eat in secret. Uh, and it looks to have worked, I think. One of our raiding teams returns home. We even managed to uh, capture a child. Earl Tadeo, Tadeo's sister, Kisilio. These names are just made up. And there's 3,100 English troops wandering around. They're not happy. They're not happy. What's actually going on down there is that Welsh Meath has declared war for the conquest of East Sex. And here is a wife that we married for an alliance. And then this was part of the big confusion about alliances being created and falling apart. And she has died from her wounds. So it looks like she was fighting. Well, there you go. 
Our last group of soldiers returned with a substantial sum of money and prestige. We're able to ransom off this prisoner for a tenor, which we should get. And what we can now start to do is um, dig ourselves even more out of this prestige hole that we find ourselves in. And one of the most easiest and effective ways of doing that is to create some titles. So we're going to create uh, a duchy, which will give us 300 prestige for 125 gold. And we do actually have two more that we could create. So I might well, for 125, we'll, we'll definitely create another one. I might see about getting some money together first of all though. So the main army here is being led by our vassal and our rival, actually. Uh, but he's he's aiding uh, Welsh Meath in attacking um, these guys. Uh, our alliance to Welsh Meath has ended. Oh, because a distant member of the family... Oh, I don't know what happened there. We might have to sort that alliance out. Uh, they didn't call us in for this alliance, though, which was rather interesting. So what we've done is we have secured a betrothal to one of his daughters, so a distant cousin of ours. Eh, not all that distant, but she's seven, so more than likely nothing will come of that marriage. I've managed to get the development in Dublin up to eight by uh, devoting our steward there for a while. Uh, he's now focusing on... Uh, the Earldom of Desmond, I think it'll take eight months to get it up to level four. Uh, I didn't actually spot that if we come to any other county, monthly growth, zero. So it's it doesn't really work until we actually put the steward increasing the development in the, the county. But I might have him do that in a few places. The next best candidate would be Brefney. Because Brefney is quite close as well. It's at 97. Of course, Brefney is not actually part of our territory. And what I've done is I've started a sway scheme against the High Chieftain, Yaknon. Uh, he's on the verge of accepting a uh, offer of vassalization, and of course that has cancelled our attempts to romance our wife. But uh, we'll get back to that later. She's fine. She can hold on a while. We mightn't have succeeded in romancing her, but we succeeded in doing something. Our wife is pregnant. And I... I think she was a better physician than that. Oh no, she was a novice physician. So now she's gone up to physician. So she's our physician, our spy master. And our wife. And Lyaknon is now up to 25, or an extra 25 opinion of us. We'll see if that'll make him accept vassalization. This is something that the Irish rulers have been keeping a watch on for the past while is how Sweden is operating. They're a bit weak at the moment. I won't say they're a bit weak, but uh, what we're looking at is that their military strength is at half capacity. They have uh, 6,000 troops and their allies have a thousand. So what we're probably going to try to see to do is if we can murder the king of Sweden, there is a 95% success chance. And we're going to see if we can actually... I don't know, should we wait until he... until we get him murdered, or should we possibly think about um, starting now declaring a war against Sweden you heard me correctly, for one of these regions in Scotland and begin the process of weakening them. Very quickly, we just got two pop-ups. Uh, Flansina is now our player heir, which we won't complain too much about. Uh, another one of our wives has become pregnant. But Orla, our cousin, and this was actually, uh, we had her as our spy master for all of five seconds before we thought better about it. Um, she has, she has died at 67 years of age, and of course Orla would be, oh god, is she a sister of ours? She's technically a sister of ours, because Flancina is technically our father. And, um, of course she had her eldest son, I think was, um, with a knight. 
Was it Rua? It was indeed. There's her brother, Kian. There's herself. There's their son, uh, Rua. And he has had two children, one of whom has died, and the other is married to Bran, the former High King of Ireland. So the that, that branch of the family continues anyway, the Rourke branch. Uh, but Orla has just died from, does it tell us? Mysterious circumstances. Oh, so she wasn't even allowed to die peacefully at 67 years of age. Died from mysterious circumstances. Then again, look at this for a list of traits. Adulterer, incestuous, fornicator, drunkard, murderer, kinslayer. What a life she had. So instead of messing around with uh, sway schemes, I sent... Chieftain Lyaknon, 44 quid. Oh no, I sent him 37, and it improved his opinion by 44. So I sent him a big heap of gold, which we could have used for mercenaries. And he will now finally accept vassalization. And after a considerable period of time, we should see the reunification of the island of Ireland. And because we have gotten Connacht back into the band, we will go back to our romance scheme. Uh, let's try and sing a love ballad this time. Apparently, she tells us we have a beautiful voice uh, before she hurries off. So our scheme continues. I think maybe the the introduction is always the same. It's always kind of... I don't think it makes much of a difference whether she says that um, she can't encourage us or, or anything like that. Uh, briefly, briefly, let's look. Let's look at the Kingdom of Ireland at the largest extent it has ever been. Now, that's, of course, until uh, somebody dies and uh, Scotland ends up going off in, in some other direction. So we do need to be careful about that. But uh, here we are, at the peak of our power. I think our plan to invade Sweden was a bit preemptive because we are not illustrious. Our prestige is uh, is hitting us. So as you can see, what I've done is I've raised some raiders and uh, we're going we're gonna to raid down Sweden instead. Uh, see if we can get some money, get some prestige, and uh, get into a position where we might be able to raid them down, or not raid them down, but actually attack them in uh, in a couple of years. We are attending a dance in Dublin, and apparently our brother-in-law and sometimes successor, Flan is, uh is boring her, I think. She's stuck in conversation with him. What we're going to do is uh, maybe a little distraction. The scheme continues with kindness. And our sieges continue with kindness as well. Of course, by the time the siege is over, the uh, the Swedish and the Danish coalition will be up to a level where uh, they'll be pretty much unchallengeable. So it looks like our plans to, uh, to attack um, Sweden will have to be aborted. Our wife has given us a child, Nyakthon, right after the dance. Uh, may you grow to be strong and wise, my son. So we might have to abort the invasion of Sweden, but there's no point in calling off the actual plan to kill him, especially when my agent, um, his wife, yeah, his wife has a has a, a sketch of the castle, so gives us an opportunity to tunnel in, or um, that looks like a tunnel that we can use. And in the midst of all this skullduggery, we have gotten ourselves a lifestyle perk. Uh, I think the Swedish are raising some kind of an army. I don't like that. I don't like that. We'll send them in to have a talk with them. And we'll sort out our lifestyle perk first of all. Again, it's simple enough. It's going to be know thyself. When death of natural causes is one year away, you will receive a warning. So back to back to the good old days of 
Mole Toli, we found a dead body. We're thinking about throwing it at our rifle, but instead uh, we will study it to see if we can get some clues about the disease's origin. Um, and possibly somebody in our court has become sick from it. And look who it is, our poor daughter Flan. Our physician, Flan's stepmother, is asking how she should be treated. I think the time has come for drastic measures. Well, it kind of worked. And another of our wives has given us a child, Lynchuk. May you grow to be a strong and wise, my son. And maybe finally I can get a chance to actually talk about why the King of Sweden is up there in the left-hand corner. I thought he was raising these armies to uh, to give us a hiding for stealing all his money. But, and this is very, very good for us, he's at war with King Popo of East Francia in the Danish conquest of the grand city of Lübeck. Right, let's see what type of an army uh, he can put together. 7,800 they have again. Uh, 11,000 out of a max capacity of 19,000. If they can suffer a chunk of casualties, we will more than likely consider thinking about declaring a war um, for this region here. And of course, this is the woman. I think... Am I right? Did she send Flansena? Or not Flansena, Moltoli. Was it her that sent um, Moltoli a box of poison coins it was his rival anyway i might be wrong i thought it was um whoever was in denmark but uh, yeah we're gonna we're gonna see how that war with um with east francia goes and possibly this will give us an opportunity to declare war for uh, parts of swedish scotland we're sending the troops back into raid and with a chunk of money that was made in the last raids, we're going to create another title. That'll help us to further our way out of the um, the pit that we're in. We're almost at Illustrious, and uh, there is one more title that we can create. So we might be in a position uh, with a bit more money to do just that. And so our wife, our super wife, has brought the the uh, smallpox outbreak i've no idea <clears throat> how that happened uh, but that that uh, smallpox outbreak has has ended finally we are safe in payment for bringing that smallpox outbreak to an end our wife wants the gleaming necklace from around the neck of the wife of our rival donal uh, we could uh, offer her a favor for the the necklace. We could steal it, and there's actually a pretty high chance that we would make away with it. It's an intrigue challenge against her. Steal the necklace. So all it says is title. I'm not too sure if we actually succeeded or failed there. Uh, however, our spy master, our wife. God, she's busy comes to us to tell us that somebody is attempting to kill this old man, a former um, knight of ours, I think. I think, but his skills are fairly low now. So there's a lot going on in the kingdom at the moment. We might have another chance to get that necklace off of Christina because her husband has just died from his wounds. No doubt the wounds that he has suffered in the wars in... Uh, in England, fighting against the English for Welsh Meath. Uh, but that leaves a council position vacant, because he was our steward. But uh, we're quite happy about it, because he was our rival. I do remember saying that we had very few good stewards, uh, which is the reason that he was our steward. Here is one of them, Moraid. She is uh, spindly. So I will assign her. Uh, she's a, a 17. Now the problem is that she is the daughter of and the successor of Angus, Mach Flansina. And he has died uh, from complications related to obesity, just like his father. And if we take a look at him, his mother 
Um, also, no. I'm confused. I am awfully confused. Is he still alive? Is he still with us? God, there are so many in this family. Here he is, Krund Maul. Uh, his daughter... I do know for a fact that he had a daughter with the exact same traits. Like I've said, I've seen some, some kind of strange stuff happening of recent. Maybe maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I am as drunk as Flansina and as Krund Maul. But the reason that I wanted to, to focus on this guy is because... Um, Basically, he is the sole surviving male child of Flansina and either of the two Acra sisters. And he is basically the puppet that is going to be placed on the throne of England. I was disappointed there for a second because I thought he'd passed away. But the intention is to place him as the Irish puppet king of England. I'm kind of waiting for this war down south to come to an end, the way that we can then sweep in. I also need to get our um, prestige up, because I want to declare an invasion for the kingdom, but we are nowhere near um, being able to do that. We have nowhere near enough prestige to do that. So there's a lot of stuff that we want to do, but we're not... I won't say we're not in a position to do it, but um, again, we might find ourselves just uh, waiting too long and getting getting cut off. There you go, that war has indeed ended. Dunaduch has become even more powerful. And probably in the next few minutes, if we're in a position to do so, we're going to try and declare a war. Uh, oh, we can't actually check at the moment, but we're going we're gonna to try and declare a war, hopefully, for the, uh, the invasion of the Kingdom of England, or possibly even the subjugation of her highest title. Some raiders picked a bad place to go raiding. Um, somebody is offering a ransom for one of our prisoners. Absolutely, we'll accept that. Never going to turn down 25 quid, so we ransomed off a baby for a tenner. Uh, we ransomed off somebody there for 25, and we're going to check we have two more prisoners. Uh, we're sieging that area down. I'll just bring these guys back onto Irish soil in Scotland. And uh, now we've even more prisoners. So we had four prisoners, we ransomed two, and now we have four prisoners. This is a husband and wife duo. Uh, we'll get... We'll get ten for him. We won't get anything for her. And you know what? Look, we won't be... We won't be devils. We won't be devils. Uh, we will demand her conversion. And we will negotiate her release. This baby will give us another ten. And then you, on the other hand, I think we're, are we, are we ransoming him, his baby to him? We are. Well, he can't pay anything at the moment because he has no money, I presume. Oh no, he's actually considering, he's considering a, a ransom request. Do you know, yeah, we'll probably, we'll probably be nice. We'll, he's giving us money, we'll demand his conversion. We'll be nice, we'll be nice. And he can be, he can be... Oh no, I thought he could be um, insular Christian with his baby. No, he's paying us for the baby. Not entirely too sure what's going on with um, with Sweden and Denmark. They actually have just engaged in battle for the first time. The The war score has just changed for the, uh, the first time. I'm going to stand down this army up here. And we're going to see what we can do in relation to England. We really are being hit badly. We can't invade the kingdom because we have nowhere near the prestige level. We need to be another two levels higher than we are at the moment. Uh, we don't have the option to subjugate them. We can't even declare war for a duchy. And what we're going to do simply, because again, as you've probably figured out, the end goal is to sweep down here, take this entire region, um, well, take England, get Welsh Mead to accept vassalization. Conquer the areas that belong to West Frankie and Brittany, and establish an empire. This is what Flansena has told, or it's uh, it's what we believe that he was hinting at. It's what we believe that the golden path that he set the Kingdom of Ireland on 
is leading to. Uh, after Flansena died, Maltoli came to power, the kingdom collapsed utterly, and now it is being reforged. We know, and we are terrified, of the threat that the Swedish um, pose, and the only way of countering that threat is to basically conquer this entire region, and that is what we are going to do, and to probably finish off, hopefully, uh, I say it should be short, but uh, it could actually turn into quite a large and difficult and awkward struggle, but we'll see, because it does have to be done, uh, while we are waiting for other stuff to happen, we are going to, of all things, considering how important they were in building the Kingdom of Ireland in the first place, we're going to come to West, uh, West Francia, and we are going to declare war. I do actually have to make sure <laughs> that I get the right county. Uh, we are going to... Uh, we have a claim here to Dorset, the Earldom of Dorset. Where the hell is the Earldom of Dorset? That's way down here at the bottom. So for now, we're just going to go with conquer the county of um, Dorset with a line going through it. And look at this, for a mighty war, the Kingdom of Ireland and the Kingdom of West Francia. Who better to command our armies than the man himself, the High King of Ireland? And once they're up to capacity, we will march them south. Um, our plan to kill the King of Sweden seems to be coming to fruition. I hope he's not afraid of spiders. 95% chance that he's killed. And there he is. The King of Sweden is dead. What timing? What timing? Uh, my little friend has done its work well. So just pause quickly. We will move these guys down into Lancaster. Or Lancashire, even. Um, I'll split the army. We'll sort that out in a second, but let's actually see what what the, uh, the scenario looks like up here. Here is the new king. They're at minus 12% uh, war score against uh, East Francia. Uh, it hasn't done a huge chunk of damage to their to their military capacity, uh, but hopefully it'll cause some bit of instability in the in the empire. Do you know what? I always just enjoy killing Swedish kings. They've been causing me a lot of problems. The West Franks are bringing in a good chunk of numbers, including from Northern Africa, but uh, I don't think they're going to be in a position either numbers-wise or logistics-wise, uh, to to hit us too much. It's going to be a bit awkward. We're probably going to have to take troops across the channel for the first time in a while. And um, unless they bring forces into Britain and we're able to actually defeat them. So hopefully, hopefully it shouldn't be too difficult of a campaign. Who knows? We've said that before in the past. There's a good chunk of forces there to our east who are hostile to us because we raided uh, Sweden. Uh, we're even seeing some raiders coming down, I think. We're seeing 2,900 French troops heading for Dublin. So it looks like there's another... Is there another attempt to kill... How does she... She's like Penelope Pitstop or something. She just keeps getting herself into trouble. We're out in a hunt. And, um, suddenly my concentration is shattered by a woman's screams. I'm coming for you, my love. I go ahead with my attempt to romance her. Uh, perhaps it would be wiser to send the page. We lose some prestige, or that's ah, probably just a bird. It's fine. And, uh, apparently she's in danger. So, yeah, we will go ahead with our attempt to romance the High Queen. Another 2,000 and something troops coming in. She doesn't look happy to see us. Uh, within what must have been a minute, but felt like an hour, I reach a clearing. Uh, she's on the ground before me, disheveled and weaponless. Opposite her, just about to strike, stands a huge boar. My arrow strikes true when the beast falls to the ground. For a moment, all she can do is stare, but then she stumbles towards me and throws herself into my arms. And, um, we get 750 prestige one way or another. Yeah, sure, we'll make her our soulmate. 
And our glory is widely known. We're now up to illustrious and heading slowly but surely for exalted. Uh, Dublin's under siege. Our allies don't seem to be doing too much about it at the moment. Or nobody does. Nobody does. Um, we'll probably, yeah, we'll have to, we'll have to bring them across by by sea. But we do have, we do have a good chunk of forces. What will our allies do, though? Will our allies follow us, or will our allies um, stay where they are? I've reassigned the command of the army to Quillon, one of Moltoli's sons, who is a siege expert, so hopefully that will give us a bit of an advantage. No, it won't. They're actually sieging down Dublin just as quickly as we are, and we had a head start. There's been another change to the succession. Our brother is now in line to succeed us. Uh, we're not paying a huge amount of attention to it. They're actually going to take Dublin before us. And some courtiers have been killed. Okay, so we've taken Lancaster. Do we march across or swim across? I think at this stage we'll have to swim. And actually what's really bad is our son Loinshuk has been captured. Uh, I think one of their forces has been hit by the army of Athlone, which is fantastic. So that'll that'll deplete them a small bit. Not much, but a small bit. And Rian Mok Maltoli is now the new uh, king. Or the new the new heir. Okay. Let's combine this army and put it under the command of our best military leader. Let's see if we can actually hit these guys. Yeah, they're going to come up into Ossery. Uh, Chieftain Ernoch has done a great job in uh, making Flansena like us. He already he's down to minus uh, 54, so hopefully that brings him up to uh, minus 20 at the moment. Uh, we'll take our army. We'll take it across into Ossery. I'm hoping our allies... Where are our allies? Are they... They're walking across. That's not great. I'd rather if we didn't have to do this, but we have just hired some mercenaries. And they are marching down with us. And 39 of our allies have come across. Fantastic. So we have this giant battle. They're going to bring their troops in very slowly. They do have a slight advantage over us in terms of troop numbers. Uh, but we've whittled them down now since we bought in those mercenaries. And it is a victory. And we're up into a positive war score. Um, what are we going to do here? For now, I'm just sending the mercenaries to siege down Dublin, and I'm going to see what the um, the other guys are doing. They've made it as far as Dublin, and they've regrouped, which is a bit of a pity. Um, I think, yeah, that's why I had her uh, pinned. This is the woman that murdered Maltoli, effectively. So unfortunately, our, uh, our reinforcements, or our mercenaries, have gone in into Dublin well ahead of the the actual standing army or the uh, the main army itself they'll probably be wiped out before we get anyone in will they just in time just in time and we get a pop up Vanya, our chieftain Monya has died from his wounds. I don't know, will he be des described as Rydovna, royal material? He was definitely somebody I wanted for the high kingship. He would have succeeded his father, Flansina, had he been uh, a slight bit older. Then he went off um, to North Africa. I don't see his wife mentioned here, though. There's his original, his first wife, uh, Saddleburga. And the wife that he picked up in... in um, 
uh, in his time in the Nasserid Emirate. Uh, doesn't appear anymore. Well, there you go. He has died from his wounds. I wonder... I wonder if he was wounded in either of these two battles. Um, because he was... He was our knight. Well, he was a knight. There's Bren. Former High King of Ireland. 79. And this was the most recent one. Um, I don't see him there. So I'm not too sure. He Maybe he's fighting in another, another war. But um, there you go, one of the one of the greats of the kingdom is dead. I think the Frankish forces are a bit undecided as to what they are and aren't doing. Uh, hopefully, we'll get Dublin siege down before they hit uh, Lanarkshire. Oh, this isn't great. This isn't great. We are going to tell our physician. Uh, to do no more than is necessary. We've become ill. We're feeling a little brighter. Fantastic work. And we'll pause before anything else happens. And we will take a look at this lifestyle perk. And what a time to pick it up. We get healthy, which gives us a medium health boost. And we're looking then at another two years before we finish off whole body and go off in some other direction. Uh, how old is the the High King at this point in time? 53. 53. He's shoving on. I don't think we're going to be seeing the conquest of England with this guy. Uh, I'm probably going to have to look at, um, at the succession. Uh, his health is fine. He is ill. But uh, he's got a lot of traits to counter it. The Siege of Dublin has been lifted. We're pulling our forces back out into the Irish Sea and we're going to sail them across to hit the um, the Frankish forces that have started to siege down Lancashire. So we could have we could have tried maybe to march them across. Our problem is we will have a bit of a disadvantage when we land. Uh, I think we will land them onto Irish soil and march them down. I was just about to say, my God, if we fail to get there by the time they uh, they siege it down, but they've uh, they've pulled out their forces. They're moving quickly. They are moving quickly. They're speedy little devils. I was worried there for a second when we saw it pop up with the uh, the elderly looking uh, High King, but um, he has lost the ill trait. He's back to his good old self. And we just check there, he's fine, is his health. So he's 54, he's already outlived a substantial number of Irish High Kings, and he's leading this battle. There we go, the Battle of the Two Kings. We've captured somebody fancy looking. Um, haven't managed to to bring the war to an end or anything like this. One of our vassals, thankfully, uh, Welsh Meath, is sieging down uh, Somerset. We'll have to march our army down, I suppose. We'll have to march them down to Dorset. Things are going from bad to worse for the King of Sweden. They're at minus 18 in their war and their... Uh, army is down to 4,000 men. Um, their alliance with Denmark has ended, which is good-ish news for us, but still, that's uh, that's 12,000 troops to be dealing with. To complicate matters, England has just gone to war for this region. Uh, so they're actually attacking our... or they were going to attack. They're coming in against us now... Uh, they were going to attack our um, our cousins in um, Meath, Welsh Meath. Uh, they're pulling back at the moment. I don't think they're going to hit us. Are we accidentally going to hit them? Do you know if we do, it might be good. Uh, 
So our our allies are abandoning the uh, the siege, and we will quickly switch out the High King and switch in Rian. The French are leaving. Hopefully, it's just a matter of time of uh, building up the war score. The West Franks have returned. Uh, oh yeah, I actually forgot they also have uh, this region down here, which the English are sieging down. Um, and they are now going back to war with the English, so poor old West Francia is getting hit badly, and Rian, our siege master, has just become our player heir. But uh, it looks like, in the next couple of minutes, the, uh, the West Franks are going to be driven completely off of Britain. And we are dedicated to our faith. It looks like the High King, Rulecon, has been reading the adverts at the back of uh, one of the annals. Uh, with the aid of a stone of glass, even old men, I'm an old man, struggling with bad eyesight, I have bad eyesight, um, could read with ease. So we're going to say, Dermot, get us one of these stones of glass that we can look through. We'll get 300 learning lifestyle experience and uh, he'll get a week hook on us we could spend 50 quid but uh, do you know what we'll hold on to our money and that brings us very close to finishing off the learning um the the perk that we're on at the moment we're at 78 percent now for taking somerset we've captured somebody's kid and there is a jihad i'm not too sure for where St. Connach, protect us. Oh, it's just declaring that they, um, that Muslim faiths are now able to call jihads following the year 1011. Um, what are we going to do with this army? I, uh, we can't march it back up because as soon as we march away, these guys will, will abandon their siege. Do you know what? We might as well just come down and help them. I don't think this war will ever end. We have... Three very high-ranking dukes. I've ransomed them all out for 100 quid each, uh, which is going to cripple our war score. The the kid will get us 50 quid. And the reason I don't think this war will ever end is because these guys are just about to siege down um, Lancashire. We have to come back up and do it all over again. And the one of the reasons for that is because I can't leave these guys on their own. What I might be able to do, I don't think I can... We'll put Lueyd in charge of Madman's company and we will send them up, but they're not going to get up anywhere near in time. Bit of a nuisance. Our poor daughter, who already had a good chunk of her face cut off, um, is after contracting typhus. Uh, be cautious. Do do no more than is necessary. We, uh, yeah, we cut our face off the last time, so yeah, we, we'll be cautious this time. Uh, tons of ransoms accepted. It hasn't actually affected our war score. It has given us a ton of money, though. That's great. Is there any hope that we will out-siege this area before they siege down? And again, the, the thing is that um, there's a lot of forces that are heading up towards them. Nope. They've taken it back. We're down to 25% war score. And... What's going to happen? Are the English going to take... Are the English going to take... Lancashire? And are we then going to actually have to go in and siege it back from the English? My god. Yeah, it looks like it. Looks like it. Nice, short war. Okay, a couple of things to get done. Our daughter has recovered from Typhus. Uh, before we go and make any more of a mess, we will unlock the whole body trait. And, right. What are we going to do now? Uh, diplomacy is, is something we could come to for the prestige. I think at this point in time, it's going to have to be, we're going to have to come down the uh, the overseer route um, to try and restore control to this absolutely chaotic, chaotic um, situation. Literally restore control. And 
build up our armies. We're sending a grand total of 650 men, our reinforcements or our mercenaries, in against the um, the French there. We're going to bring our armies up, park them in Cheshire, and send them in against the English. We'll also have some proposals. Um, Rian, a potential successor to marry into that household? Yes, absolutely. I didn't notice this, but our allies seem to have deserted us. So we've gone in against a vastly... Well, it's not a superior English army, uh, but they will have larger forces in in a second. They've gotten them in to bear against us. Of course, Rian was commanding that army. So now we're trying to fight. I'm not too sure where our allies have gone. Well, I won't say I don't know where our allies have gone, but of course there's there no, there's no reason for them to be anywhere. Um, there's no reason for them to be anywhere. There they are. Are they going to retreat? I was going to say, are they going to retreat back to Ireland? They're not. Lots of wounds, but no major losses. No losses full stop in the Battle of Salford. So what, what are we looking at? Um, I hope they're just going down to fight the forces. If we, can, if we can just siege down this area again. And actually, while we're in the middle of all this, do you know what we're going to do? We're going to hold a feast. Why not? Our friends come from far and wide to our mobile dining table in the middle of a battlefield. Welcome, friends. So again, it's it's quite fitting that we're we're eating in the middle of a battlefield, and um, Chieftain Quillon and Indirupt have led a group of. Horses into the middle of the feast, by the looks of it, as broken bones. Um, ah, we lose 75 prestige, but uh, we gain lively feast for 10 years. So, cavalry damage. I don't think we actually have any cavalry, so we just lose 75 prestige. The guests are going home. We must have left early. Um, 150 prestige, and we get the Eager Reveler trait. The English, the English are sieging down our area, uh, the areas that we that they want that we've occupied. Here's our primary wife. We're getting suspicious that she's uh, cheating on us. Uh, we will watch her every move. Who's going to win this this siege battle? If we can get it siege down first of all, uh, Madman's company have left. Uh, if we can get it siege down first of all, then we should maybe almost have enough. I don't know. Oh, that's not great. Oh, it is great. We've gone from uh, we've gone up to ninety six percent. I don't think we're going to be in a position to get the uh, the rest of that before they take Somerset. Uh, before the English take Somerset off us, has gone to 97. It would be fantastic if he would accept, will not accept. Oh, Lord, 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 Lord. What are we going to have to do? March the army back down again? Possibly just a white piece out of this mess, this other mess of a scenario. One thing we will do for definite is call a hunt. Might as well... Might as well get some good hunting done while we're in this region. So our spy master has discovered who killed our sister. It is this person. Um, their kid is was captured in one of the recent raids. She's the wife of one of our um, knights. She schemed from the shadows to have Orla murdered. 
dishonorable as well. I don't know. We have a, a murder secret against her. It might give us an opportunity to uh, to imprison her or something like that. I'm kind of watching to see what happens here in England. <laughs> Everyone expects me to return triumphant with a trophy, but as things are looking, I will only return with shame. Well, the nearest market should have a boar. We lose 20 gold, gain 150 prestige, and gain a hunting trophy, which gives us an extra 0.5 prestige per month. 98%, 86%. The hunt is over. Uh, we get another 150 prestige. Very good. Oh man, this is going on a lot longer than I anticipated. Not what we wanted to do. Um, not what we wanted to do, but what we are doing now. Actually, the, the war score is going up pretty quickly. So maybe this is a bit of a waste of time. But we're going to we're gonna probably have to land an army. Do you know what? By the time we land this army anywhere, this war will be over. Um, this war will be over. Yeah, it's up to 91% already. Ah, so they've taken, they've taken Somerset. I see what's after happening. I see, I see. Yeah, do you know what? Let's, uh, we might, we might land them here. Those guys aren't strong enough to see just down and somebody's going up to give them a baiting. So it's very likely that we will actually have uh, won this war before we actually make uh, landfall. Some bit of hubbub seems to have happened in Meath. I'm not too sure what's after happening. As the Earldom of Huntingdon was inherited. So does that mean... No, he's still there. Um, but he seems to have maybe lost control of the region somehow. Yeah, that was a bit of a, a waste bringing those guys down there. But it became a chaotic battle. Everyone just went after the uh, the West Franks there for a while. I thought the English were trying to take this entire region, but they're not. We're in a position to bring our war to an end. We enforce our demands. So be it. And we can disband our army. There you go, a rather lengthy episode in which we didn't get much done. We conquered a single county and killed a single king of Sweden. Sweden is actually at the moment in a war, or in two wars, if we come and take a look at them. Um, they're plus 11% in the king of Finland's attempts to subjugate Sweden. That's not good. That is not good. Well, it's good that they're they're winning that war. Uh, they're all also winning the war against our poor friend, well, he was Moltoli's friend, King Popo of East Francia. Uh, their troops are... they 5,000 at the moment. I don't know if it's if it's worth, especially as, as we're so low. Um, what, uh, what could we put together right now? The... About four and a half ish on a good on a good day, um, so I don't think it's worth us. I don't think we're in a position to declare war on Sweden just yet. Um, the Queen of England has died and has been succeeded by a new guy, whose military capacity is not great. I think maybe, yeah, they have 3,000 mercenaries, so I presume that's... Nope, it's not eating into their into their uh, their pockets at all. They have a lot of mercenaries. That's actually the only way that they're able to keep the whole thing operational. So that might be an idea, is to take to declare war on England and to take the duchy. There's two counties here which would basically give us... Um, which would connect up this region, give us another another duchy. But yeah, what we what we basically need to do is actually take the kingdom itself, subjugate the kingdom. I don't think we're going to be seeing that before the death of uh, Ruokon. He's 57 now. He is fine due to his numerous health benefits. But um, yeah, I'm not too sure what way the kingdom of Ireland or the kingdom of England is going to go. It's going to Rian at the moment, who's also leading for the... Um, 
the leading the election for the Kingdom of Ireland, but I don't know is that is that actually is that actually correct? Uh, we come and look at Rian. He's not he's not great. He's a two star two star um, uh, soldier, but he is leading all of our uh, sieges at the moment. Uh, he's betrothed to somebody who doesn't bring him any troops. But sure, how bad? Because I don't think, as a, as a bastard branch of the family, I don't think she's uh, she's getting in any troops or anything, but she does have the comely trait. It's entirely possible that, that I organized this marriage uh, years ago. Who knows? Who knows at this stage? But uh, we've made some bit of progress. It's still on a knife edge. I mean, at any point in time that the Swedish decide to turn on us, we're in trouble. Um, the, the, the carving, the carving of Ireland has sorted itself out. It used to kind of carve in a weird way, but now it's just perfectly straight. Look at that. Spreading up into, um, into northern Scotland, an area that I said we'd never conquer. So I think we used to hold all of this, and this was the region that we didn't hold, and now we've lost. Uh, we've lost these three counties. We definitely had them. Um, we definitely had these three counties. I think it was maybe these ones that we that we didn't hold, so yeah, it's kind of it's kind of swapped around. Uh, there you go. Not the most exciting of episodes. It was a uh, it was one where we kind of floundered around a lot. Maybe that says something about the um, the high kingship. It's been in a bit of crisis of recent, as it's been uh, as it's gone from from one elderly king to another. Uh, we're trying to uh, we're trying to settle it down. I think um, Ruokon is, is very wary of the fact that his two predecessors weren't exactly the greatest. So you had Ruokon, who was such a depraved figure that, uh, that it led to a civil war, and uh, Blahamach, who of course destroyed the entire kingdom. So I think it's very important for, um, for Ruokon II to, to kind of stabilize the kingdom somewhat and, and actually restore some bit of honor to the Ruokon branch of the family. Uh, it does look like it's going back to, if I am correct, the Green Graffador branch of the family. This is, oh wow, we're into Generation 4 if it goes to Rian, but it's swapping back and forward, left, right and centre. We'll have to pay a lot closer attention to it on the next episode. As always, I would love to hear, uh, if I'm ever talking very much about the uh, the succession, I say this now as we're coming toward the end of the series, but if I'm ever doing a lot of talking about the succession, who would you like to see succeed? I know people are saying that they'd like to see um, uh, high military... Uh, rulers and things like that. Uh, every once in a while, we do get to look at some of the characters that are actually vying for the high kingship. So I'd like to, I'd like to hear your comments. Of course, by the point in time that you make the comments, the succession will have uh, been and gone. But I'm always interested just to see what uh, what other people would do if they were in my shoes. Thank you very much for joining me on this episode, and I will talk to you on the next one.